everyone, welcome to the coverage of IT sector results, the expectations from Q1 season of 2024. This video is based around 5 key stocks. I will do a side by side comparison of numbers. I have also created some custom ratios that you will not find on most sites. I will talk about my expectations from these companies. There is a section towards the end where I have talked about my views on the IT industry, why there is a storm brewing in the IT industry right now. When you talk about Nifty 50, there are three companies in the top 20. TCS is at number 2, Infosys the leader from yesteryears is at number 7 and then we have HCL slightly lower. None of these companies is at a 52 week high right now. This is TCS. Infosys is slightly better. Though FIs have bought a lot in the last one or two weeks. FI is like Infosys more than TCS in my opinion. HCL also is in the 70% to 80% zone. The product centric companies like Zomato, Oracle and InfoEdge are at a high PE and towards a 52 week high. Now let me jump to the numbers part. This first section is pure numbers which are available to all of us. Market cap. Then a comparative PE. Persistent has the highest PE. Now that may not be a reason for not investing in persistent. Low PE does not necessarily mean a good company. For that PG is a better indicator perhaps. So based upon the PG part, HCL is the most investable company followed by persistent, Infosys, then TCS and Wipro is the least preferred as per PG ratio. Dividend payout is important for a lot of people. TCS and Infosys pay a lot of dividend. They nearly pay everything they earn these days as dividend. HCL traditionally has given 100% kind of payout. So that's already at 90%. Wipro does not give the entire EPS as the dividend. Persistence dividend payout ratio is around 37%, which is a third of their EPS. HCL's current dividend yield ratio is the best followed by Infosys. Usually these numbers get better and better over time. A lot of companies these days buy back stocks using their spare cash which reduces the equity capital. Coming to holding structure, TCS, Tata Sons hold 72%. HCL and Wipro have traditionally been promoter driven companies, 61% and 73% promoter share. Infosys, the promoter share has gone down significantly. It is now a professionally run company to a large extent, 15% promoters, persistent 31%. FIs have maintained their holding in all of these five companies. FIs hold most in Infosys. That is also because TCS 72% is held by promoters. So the free float is low. Persistent, a quarter of the stocks are owned by FIs. DIs have sold their stake in Persistent. HCL 15%. This also has reduced. Public has increased their holding in Persistent but gone down in all four other stocks. If you have watched some of my previous videos, I like public holding going down. And I prefer FI holding going up. DIs should not be going down. It's okay if they remain static. If they are buying from public, it is okay. But they should not be buying from FII. That is something which I consider negative. TCS has reserves of 90,000 crores. Infosys though market cap is lot lesser. The reserves are nearly similar. 86,000 crores. HCL lot smaller but still 67,000 crores worth of reserves. Same story with Wipro. Wipro actually is larger than HCL in terms of reserves. Persistent reserves are low. The size of company also is low. Now when it comes to sales, TCS obviously is the largest, nearly 250,000 crores. Persistent for contrast is 10,000 crores. These numbers on their own do not mean anything. I'll talk about the ratios. Expenses also for an IT company are mostly employees. So if your sales are high, the expenses will be high. Net profit number again will be discussed in terms of ratios, but TCS has the highest profitability. That does not mean that we should invest in the largest company by any means and avoid the smallest company. These ratios I have tried to reflect the resilience of the company. So reserves to sale, which means if the sales for any reason drop, then can the company weather the storm? Higher the ratio, more the resiliency of the company. TCS has the least resiliency, 37%. The best is Wipro, 82% resilience. So if there is a problem with the sales numbers, Wipro will be able to weather it for a lot longer. Though the stock may take a beating, but the company will survive. Next best is 62% HCL followed by Infosys and Persistent 50%. Note that the two companies which are highly promoter driven HCL and Wipro, they are most thick skinned to weather a storm. Next ratio is expense to reserve. What happens for example if your sales are down but the expenses remain same, can you weather that? It is similar but not same because here we are talking about expenses not sales. So TCS has twice the expenses compared to its reserves. It will only be able to survive six months technically if there is no revenue. The best ratio again is of Wipro 1 which means their reserves are nearly equivalent to their annual expenses right now. 
the next best is HCL 1.27 followed by Infosys and then Persistent. Note that this is not necessarily a bad ratio because it is not that TCS's revenue will go down suddenly to zero. However, it gives an indicator of the resiliency that the promoters or the management has built in case there is a problem in the sector or the global industry, whether they'll have to lay off employees in a hurry, suppose there's a 20% drop in sales, for example. So if the company is okay to take a hit on the stock price, then Wipro can withstand that kind of pressure most compared to other companies. Reserves to profit. This is again an interesting ratio. If reserves are high compared to profit, then the number will be high. For example, in case of Wipro, the reserves are way higher than the profit number. Look here, 75,000. Net profit 11,000. In case of TCS, reserves 90,000. Net profit 45,000. So, if the reserves are good compared to profit, then you have a lot of investable cash. It, however, depends upon the management, how they utilize the cash on the books. We have a ratio coming up to reflect that. After Wipro, the next best ratio is 447% with persistent. You can view it as a war chest for acquisitions, for example. HCL, then Infosys, least TCS. The sales growth of TCS 7%, it has reduced. For Infosys, it is 5%. It is very erratic of late. Same with HCL, the last number is 8%, but it is pretty erratic. Wipro sales growth is actually negative. Persistent 15%, it increased, but it is reducing right now. Operating margin wise, TCS enjoys the highest operating margin followed by Infosys. This is the advantage of scaling and large size probably also. HCL, Wipro and persistent. Free cash flow is a measure of the cash flow that you get, which is not just net profit, but the net cash flow you are left with after accounting for nearly everything. It can be higher or lower than the net profit. The ratio for TCS is 90%, which means a part of the net profit is getting lost somewhere. Infosys is lower 88%, HCL 136%. So their free cash flow is way higher than their net profit. Wipro is even better, nearly 150%, which means for every dollar they earn from business as net profit, their free cash flow is $1.5, which is very interesting. Persistent, 86%. Now if you have reserves, what do you do with them? You invest a part of it, ideally a lot or most of it, into appreciating assets. The investment to reserve ratio for TCS is 35%, Infosys is 29%, HCL only 11%. Wipro 45%, which is the highest, persistent 17%. So Wipro is generating maximum FCF or free cash flow and also investing the most of it as well. Cash conversion cycle, once you have completed the work for a client, how much time does it take for you to recover the money from the customer? Interestingly, this number also is best for Wipro 47 days. The worst is for TCS, which is nearly a three month cycle. Persistent and HCL have nearly a two month cycle. So Infosys is two and a half months. The sooner you get the money, the lesser is the risk and better is the cash flow in terms of cost of money. Working capital days is approximately a measure of how much time it takes for a company to convert its working capital into revenue. So least time is preferred. TCS, 36 days. Infosys, 60 days. HCL, nearly same number. Least number again is for Wipro and persistent is at 34. So 32 and 34 are fantastic days. Nearly in one month, you are able to convert your working capital into revenue. In my last quarter coverage of TCS, I explained how ROCE and ROE numbers can be managed. If you want to understand that concept, do watch the video again. I'll leave a link. But the companies which are giving a lot of dividend, which means they are reducing the cash on the balance sheet or buying back equity via buybacks are actually going to increase their ROCE and ROE without improving the business metrics. So don't go just by these numbers for investing in say TCS or Infosys because their ROC or ROE are very good and Wipro's numbers are red. That is because Wipro is investing, not giving dividend. If you have to charge more rates or higher rates from a customer or if you have to be competent say in cloud or Gen AI, then you have to either buy expensive employees or you have to train your employees a lot. For most companies, it is about three to seven hours a month. If anyone feels that half a day or one day of training in a month will make their employees smart enough in cloud or AI or for that matter Gen AI, then they are totally mistaken. It is not that the customers can't see it. I could not find the data for persistent, but in general, my perception is persistent quality of people is higher compared to the other four players. My expectations from the results this time, 
these are the numbers from the previous quarter so while the general expectation from it sector are low i expect that tcs will actually give a good revenue 64000 compared to 61237 crore this time the reason for this is the new ceo is going to complete one year in june and i expect that he would have done something to show to the board at the end of the year in line with higher revenue the expenses would be higher 44000 crores operating profit would be 19000 crore the operating margin would increase a little from 28% to 29% the net profit also will be higher at 14000 crores eps i expect to increase from 34.37 to 36 if the numbers are good then the dividend will be good there could be a buyback also if the numbers are not good which means this analysis is wrong then there could be a bonus issue to keep the stock afloat and prevent it from tanking i expect fis to sell dis to buy and public also to increase their holding in the stock in q1 infosys is totally different from tcs i expect that revenue will be a tad lower the expenses in line 29000 crores i expect however the operating profit 8800 crores to be at an opm of 24% because the situation is known infosys would better manage their costs the net profit would be 6200 crores the eps however would drop sharply 19.10 will drop to 14 that is because there was an extraordinary item last time in the balance sheet see this number 2729 crores there is no such entry in other income at all in any of the previous quarters this is a copy paste mistake from previous slide i expect fis to increase the stake and i expect dis and public to reduce their stake in infosys in this quarter at cl tech i expect a flat quarter 29000 in terms of revenue not much change in terms of expenses 22382 will become 23000 to support slightly higher revenue operating profit will be 6500 crore but i expect the operating margin to be a little lower for at cl tech this time net profit will be around 4000 crores EPS will increase slightly only 14.69 will become 15 I don't expect any major dividend kind of announcement from HCL Tech in this quarter FIs would be unchanged DIs would reduce that will be bought by public Wipro I expect that the revenue would go up from 22200 to 23000 crores the expenses would be higher than the increase in revenue as a result the OPM will drop to 18% in this quarter this will gradually improve maybe I expect the operating profit to be 4500 crores slightly higher than 4381 crores net profit will be also slightly higher 3000 crores EPS not a big change 5.42 will become 6 as per the numbers i am seeing already increase for wipro fis are probably buying dis also are buying public would have reduced their stake in wipro for persistent i expect the revenue to increase from 2591 crores to 2800 crore and expenses will increase more 2136 will increase to 2300 crore as a result slight drop in opm to 17% operating profit of around 520 crore net profit 350 crores so this time focus would be on sales not profitability for persistent eps increase a bit to 22 around fis would reduce their stake dis and public will buy more of persistent there are certain problems that the sector is however facing a lot of large companies are a part of partner ecosystem for international players if there is a slowdown in the bigger geographies then that will immediately reflect in the partner ecosystem public cloud though it is expected to be a commodity right now the expertise is still scarce the hyperscalers are introducing more and more complexity which is making it confusing for the cxos also as the volume is explored the tco is becoming a concern for many cxos the acceptability of hybrid and multi cloud is still low this is practically what is needed but cost security as well as expertise wise this is a challenge ai and gen ai my views are a bit controversial most sellers and buyers are serving their kra and saving their jobs in my opinion the world does not need ai and gen ai in the current avatar the way they are being positioned banks continue to work on sales they continue to starve it in most cases the digitization wave is over it started somewhere around pandemic i will give it a score of d for most cases because they are pretty low on cx and usability because most banks have attempted to reduce their cost versus solving a customer's problem new banking is still a distant dream in india as well as in most countries most geographies protect their banks most banks have huge muscle power crypto the expectations are huge but if china and india the two biggest countries 
representing close to 3 billion people in the world if they are saying no to crypto then i am unsure what purpose crypto will serve but nvidia is 3 trillion and there is huge hype and cost going into building crypto platforms hardware and software collapse in this space can lead the world 10 years behind where we are right now in terms of economic impact in the us if you go by nasdaq then the value concentration is perhaps in the top five who have their own captives they outsource but not the key jobs in fact many banks many companies are insourcing not outsourcing right now teams are getting small the local problem of india remain to be competitive workforce it is increasingly hard to get a fresher and make them work this was the best weapon against wage inflation for decades rupee may appreciate in the near futures especially because of the inclusion in the jp morgan bond index 40 billion dollars is supposed to flow into india November of this year is when US goes to election, UK just had their election, the government changed there. The policies of the new government may decide where IT will go, where banks will go, how the outsourcing part will happen over the times to come. This may be good for India, this may not be so good for India. So I would prefer to wait and watch till November for where IT is going. Interest rates are expected to drop in the US. Let's see when that happens, what impact that has on the economy. A lot of that anticipation is already priced in. If the rates are not cut soon, then there will be problems however. Indian companies are strategically acquiring assets in US. However, in most cases, the companies being acquired are very small in size. So while inorganic growth is great, size is important. Infosys also has acquired some companies. Wipro keeps acquiring companies. Those need to make an impact of say 5 to 10% to the balance sheet. Otherwise good, but no material impact. For companies like TCS and Infosys, if I was on the board probably, I would say focus on large scale acquisitions. For example, look at Microsoft when they acquired LinkedIn. Look at Google when they acquired YouTube. They paid quality dollar. They paid high money. They didn't acquire cheap. But these companies have made a huge difference over 5 to 10 years to the balance sheet of the parent. This risk appetite is missing in IT right now in my opinion. Most of the boards and leaders seem to be very defensive right now protecting their turf versus taking risks. This in my opinion is going to drag IT companies down right now. So I would wait for all these factors to play out. I would wait for the US elections to play out. For now, I have sold my stakes in Persistent as well as Infosys. TCS, I exited a while back. LTTI also was trading. I have exited that. So my holding in IT right now is at zero. When will this be revisited? Probably around Q3, somewhere in line with US elections, maybe after the election results. If you are heavily invested in IT, do take this video as an input. This is only for educational purpose, but do consider where you want to park your money for the next six months. Do it wisely. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you next time.